Today's video is a repair video. We have a OM10 here, which is probably my most hated camera. I don't like this camera for a number of reasons. One, it's cheap construction. Two, the lack of a fixed shutter speed system. Let's see, what else, what else do I hate about it? Just this shutter button itself, because it's, it's positioned in a way that you'd think you can move this somehow, but it, but it is actually uh, fixed to the body like that. I also hate the ASA selection, which is no, no, no stranger from the OM2. And I think the advanced lever feels cheap and crummy. Um, alternatively, it does have a fixed hot shoe, so proud of them for that. But the camera itself, uh, this one in particular, has a really annoying issue, which a lot of Olympus cameras have, which is this gear right here. Now, this gear sucks. I hate it, but it's okay. We'll talk about it. And this is basically the take-up or the connective spring for the take-up spool of the curtain mechanism right here. So underneath here sits the spool for the curtain. The advanced lever targets this thing here, which will then rotate this. Now the problem is, is there's a spring that sits under here. Let's move it a little closer for you. So this spring that sits there requires a certain amount of tension, and that is to make sure that this little notch there lines up perfectly with that little bunny ear right there. And if it doesn't do that, then you're fucked. And I've had this camera for much longer than I'd like because uh, it is a friend of a friend's camera. And so sometimes stuff like this will happen where like I'll have someone's camera and I'll like forget about it because I don't know, I moved twice in the span of a year. And then I had a bunch of other like random orders that I had to work through. It, it's just, it's been kind of a chaotic time. So some things fall under the radar, unfortunately, and I feel terrible about it, but I dedicated a large portion of today to finish working on this. And I discovered what I believe could potentially be the resolution. Now to help, sometimes all that's required is a little bit of remaneuvering things in order for it to line up. For this special camera, that was not the case. Something like that. I'll go with that. Um, basically what was happening is, regardless of how many times I like repositioned it and maneuvered it, um, it would reset to being a pain in the ass. So then over the course of many moons, I replaced most of the parts on the bottom until finally today, I think I have found out what was wrong with it. <sighs> which was, of course, the tension of the spring that sits under it, which was something that I mentioned earlier as being very important. Now, I'm not entirely sure that this is actually going to work. If it does, I will probably cry a little bit, but it's okay because you can't see my face. If it doesn't work, I will also probably cry a little bit, but that's okay again because you cannot see my face. So, I uh -huh, caught it. So what we're looking at here, the main mechanisms of this system is this little catching thing here, which catches, let's see if I can zoom in a, a smidge for you. Scoot that up. Okay. Um, this catching mechanism grabs that little peg on the gear. And then there are two screws I always get this goofed up because on some of the cameras, the cross-threaded screw is the gray one or the silver one, and then on others, it's the black one. And I was just working on an OM-1, and on the OM-1, it was the, the silver one was the was the normal one, and the black one was the cross-threaded one. Uh, the cross-threaded one sits there, and then in the middle, and then the normal one sits right here. And when I'm done working on this, I'm going to show you. Already I'm feeling as though this is not going to be the solution because it shouldn't have as much freedom to move as it does currently. But let's, let's give it a rip. 
The other thing too that I wanted to point out about this repair that's very annoying is repositioning this gear is not a picnic. And I also just, God damn, I think I just lost all the tension. Yep, I did. Okay, I have to redo it all. So repositioning this gear is no picnic um, for a couple of reasons. One, the way that it sits in there, it's pretty difficult to access. And then two, the way that the spring kind of connects in there, you kind of have to keep it pretty flush. So that's why I have to remove this system here first in order to place the gear on, to then wind it up and then place the curtain spring back where it belongs. And it's just kind of a mess. Um, I also just clipped my fingernails and I have a little bit of a, a, it was a, it was a blister at one point. And then in the course of yesterday, it kind of ripped apart. So just like exposed uh, epi epidermal dermal layer. I don't remember, whatever is below the epidermis. I think it's dermal. Um, so that doesn't feel awesome. But, you know, okay, so basically what we're looking at here is we want there to be some form of tension and there's just none because the advanced system on the bottom of these cameras is pretty much the same from the OM-1 here to the OM-10, which is nice if you're working on them because there is that kind of that like near direct translation of parts. However, it is inconvenient because value wise, in my opinion, I think the OM-1 is much better than an OM-10. The OM-1, despite my kind of not super positive feelings towards it. Uh, just functionally as a better system. Okay, what the fuck? So this is just working now. Oh, that's that's annoying. Okay, well, I, I, okay. Um, functionally, the OM-1 is just a better camera. Straight up, it is mechanical. It does have the shutter speed selection on it as well. It's also not like half made of plastic, so you're never like too bothered about it like breaking all the time, like the OM-10, we'll get back to that. And also, let's see, let me goof this up. Oh yeah. Um, I think that might work actually. I'm gonna have to reset that a little bit, but yeah, so there's the stopper that sits right there and you can kind of tell there's a little discoloration at the top and that is where the screw sets and this silver one here is in the middle and it's a cross thread. So it's gonna be lefty tidy, righty loosey. Um, this, obviously this line up there is not gonna work. So I'm gonna have to reset that. And again, we have to be very delicate because we need to lift it just enough Okay, just enough so it can slide over the teeth of the gear, but not too much that you lose the tension of the spring sitting underneath. You want it to line up somewhat like that, so that way it catches up. Oh my, I am so pissed. I'm so happy, but I'm so pissed. Okay, so that's basically all of this. Jiminy Christmas, so I don't even know what the deal was. Either the screw was wrong or the spring was wrong. The spring did look like it was a little bit offset. That happens sometimes because this is like the cheapest version of the Olympus camera. Potentially the OMG is cheaper because I think it's, oh my God, this is so garbage, um, which is what the OMG stands for. But I think for all intents and purposes, this was the entry camera because like, why would anyone need a shutter speed manual adapter? We'll just shoot everything in auto. That'll be fine. Just stupid. This is the dumbest attachment. I hate it so much, but that's okay. Moving on. Basically, the point is, is that after a long period of time, either in rest or in charged position, 
the spring lost its tension and thus made it difficult for it to reset properly, which caused that spring to not wind up back how it should, which meant that the other gear was not resetting properly, if that makes sense. So let me just drop it down real quick. If I can find a piece of paper. Okay, so I'll just use my Olympus notes here, the back end of that. So we have the, let's use this pen, the gear that sits here, right? And then we have the other gear, some, something like that. Yeah, that's, that's good enough. Okay, so these two gears need to interact in a certain way. And then there's this gear here, which has the little stopper right there. And so what you want to have happen when you advance is that this turns all the way here, and then the spring that sits underneath here will then revert this back to this position. What it was doing, because this spring wasn't tight enough, this gear, was kind of moving back into this position. And because there was no tension, there was nothing causing it to fling back. And when it wasn't doing that, then this wasn't resetting to its proper position and it would be kind of sitting like this. And if it's sitting like this, then this gear that has the little cat ears or whatever, wasn't engaging it properly. So all of it really relied upon the spring sitting under here. Now, this is typically what happens with these cameras. Um, Sometimes it does require a complete spring replacement. Other times it just requires to be reset manually. It all depends, but eight, seven, eight times out of 10, this is the reason why your Olympus, your OM1, OM2, OM3, OM10, OMPC, OMG, OM4 maybe, I'm not, I've worked on one OM4 and it wasn't for this issue, but regardless, all of those, if they're not firing, it could be because of this. Like if mechanically they're not firing. If, for instance, you have an OM2 that is just doing one of these. This is actually a really good example. So if you have an OM2 that's just doing this, quick way to reset that, move it down to bulb, and I'll pop it down, and it will fire on bulb mechanically, but it won't fire on any of the other speeds without batteries in there. You can check the batteries by doing this. Uh, there's a light there. Pressing up on this, the light should turn on. It's a red light. If it's not turning on, you need new batteries. Um, even on manual, it will not fire at the right speed. So you have to go to B, press down on here, move it over to the bulb, and then you can fire mechanically. If it's not firing mechanically, it could be because of that. Um, the OM1, the only thing preventing it from firing is mechanical issues. And this is usually where it stems from in the bottom. So, oh my God, I cannot believe that. I've had that camera for like a year, um, but I'm done now. I've, I've moved, I'm done moving. I'm working on the things I have. I'm sorry for delays. I hope this was a beneficial thing for you to learn. I'm kind of on a little bit of an Olympus tear right now. I really don't like those cameras, but you know what? I think they're great for other people, just not for me. So that's those are my two thoughts. Um, but I appreciate you watching, as always. Thank you. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did, make sure you like the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. I do need to clip my fingernails a little bit better. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope this helps. Comment any questions you have down below. Appreciate it as always. Catch you on the next one.